to Dixie Bell's Instagram page, Facebook. Hello, good to see you guys on Facebook as well. Thank y'all for coming to Whimsical Wednesday on Dixie Bell's Facebook and Instagram page. My name is Tracy and I'm a brand ambassador for um, Dixie Bell Paint Company. I've been with them a little over three years and I've been meeting y'all right here on Wednesday night in my shop for um, about three years. And uh, we've just been painting all sorts of things. I love to show that you can use this paint on every possible surface that you can think of. So we are here tonight to finally paint fabric. We painted a leather chair about this time last year. Um, my office chair, as a matter of fact, I've painted many, 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 many fabric chairs with Dixie Bell paint, which is a chalk mineral paint. Um, and I get asked this question more often than, well, it's one of my most often, uh, how do you say that? Most often asked questions. Is that right? Most frequently. Most frequently asked question. Thank you, babe. Thanks, babe. That was Matt, by the way. Hi, Matt's, guys. Matt's here with us tonight, my husband. He's behind the camera. Uh -huh. He is your mouth and my eyes. So he is watching for any comments or questions that you might have. Dixie Bell is usually, they usually join us behind the scenes as well and answer questions and kind of moderate the live at the same time. So um, I'm not sure if they're with us tonight. Hopefully so. I think we've kind of sometimes had them and sometimes not for yet. a few weeks. So please say hi when you come on. Let me know that you're here. Let Matt know that you're here. Say hi to Matt. I bet. And um, that is it. Let's see. Okay, so this chair, so this is the deal. I get, I have been asked over and over about painting fabric. So, you know, I paint canvas shoes. I paint aprons. Um, I paint chairs. What other fabric stuff do I do? But, oh, overalls. Blue jeans. O overalls, blue jeans, blue jean jackets, all those sorts of things. So, I, uh, I haven't had a custom order come up. I do custom orders, and I haven't had one come up for a chair. But I thought, you know what? What is the big deal? I'll just go find a chair. And um, I looked for one last night on Marketplace and found this one. And she said she had it available. I went and picked it up today and brought it home. And it is Perfect. Look at it. It's such such a perfect chair to paint. The reason is a lot of times some of you ask about painting chairs when I when you send me the pictures, I look at it and I say, why don't you just recover that? Um, like our dining room chairs. We've recovered a several times several times. So a lot of times it's really easy to just unscrew the screws from underneath, pop it out get yourself some fabric, get really nice fabric, get a super affordable fabric if, if budget is an issue, and cover it with your fabric, put it back in place, staple it in place on the bottom, put it back down and screw it back on. Super easy, right? But when you have a chair like this, it's not that easy because if you look, this chair has been upholstered and finished off with nail head tacks. So it's been, this fabric has actually been tacked in place and so has the seat. The nail head trim goes um, all the way around on all sides. So that's really not as easy as just popping off, covering it, setting it back down, and being able to cover up all your mistakes. This takes skills. <laughs> this takes skills of which I probably could find in myself. I'm sure Matt can figure it out because he's super good with stuff like this. But when I see chairs like this, these are my painter chairs. So that's my first tip for you guys. Um, Y'all ask what, you know, what kind of chair is best to paint? Chairs like this that make no sense unless you are an upholsterer or you really, really want to tackle a big job, this is a really good excuse to let's just paint it and let's do something fun with it. So um, that's my first tip. My second tip to you is when you are shop, maybe you have chairs at home already, but if you're actually seeking out a chair, let's say you own a shop or you own a booth and you want to add some really cute and fun painted chairs to your um, booth or your shop or to offer on Etsy or whatever it is that you do. Um, if you have to go out and, and seek chairs, you have to go source them, you really need to pay attention to the fabric that's on the chairs. So this fabric is perfect. It is like a cotton, kind of like a twill. It's got it's a, it's a, this is raised a little bit, the stripe, but the rest of this is very, I, I don't know my fabrics. Someone want to make a guess what this is? <laughs> it's, it's like a cotton fabric, a cotton twill. It's got a satiny sheen to it. It kind of feels, uh, polyester. I, I don't, is that what someone's guessing? No, that's, yeah, me. You? <laughs> 
you. I don't know. Dixie Bell's on, by the way. Oh, yay. Thank you, Dixie Bell, for being here tonight. Thank you so much. We're going to paint a chair, Dixie Bell. We're going to paint B. the fabric part of the chair. We got B. Nance, Valerie. We got Marcy, Elizabeth, Sandra. They're all tuning in. Yay. Elizabeth Poteet, not uh, from Poteet. Elizabeth Poteet, not Poteet, Texas, huh? Thank you, guys. Thank you all for being here. And I hope that you are excited because I I don't think I've done uh, fabric online live. Not that I can remember. Um, you may have seen, I think the oh, last Becky. painted fabric chair that I did was a zebra giraffe. Zebra slash giraffe. It was actually a giraffe with zebra stripes. And this was her body with a dress and then her neck went up and she had her zebra head and she had gorgeous florals all over her head. That was my, I think that was my last um, painted chair, fabric chair. So Bridget um, says taffeta. Am I saying that right? Taffeta? taffeta? Oh, taffeta? Taffeta? Um, no, taffeta. It's, it's not a taffeta. <laughs> he, you may Matt said taffeta. <laughs> taffeta. It's not a taffeta. Um, no, it's not taffeta. Ta maybe you said that because I said it's like uh, silk, but it isn't. It's, it's, it's just a cotton. It's like a cotton twill. That's what it is. So that is a perfect fabric. That is the perfect fabric. Another really, really good fabric to get to paint is like a canvas chair or duck cloth, like a duck cloth type fabric. Um, a denim type fabric works really, really well to paint on, on chairs. What you want to avoid is anything that has pile, anything that's textured or has, you know, is built up. Um, a lot of times you'll see like damask or roses that have they're raised up off of the fabric and they have thickness to them and you can feel them um textured t yeah it's you know it's tech it's got pile i think it's called pile you don't want anything that when you run your hand across it it's raised up off of that fabric that whatever that's made out of that raises that up where they get those roses to lift like that or the damask or whatever print it is Whatever that is, um, or any kind of like tweed, anything like that, y'all, that gets hard. It is, it, it, there's no way to not make that crunchy. Those I've tried many, many times and like they look beautiful. They look beautiful when you take a picture, but no one's going to want to sit on that. It's just, it just gets hard. Can you paint velvet? Okay, so we're going there. That's the, that's the loaded question. Can you paint velvet? probably not the right way to ask that question because yes you can paint velvet you can paint velvet my experience with velvet is not good um i've tried multiple ways i've never been able to get my velvet to feel like something that i would want to sit on it gets in my opinion just too hard after it just gets hard so i don't i you won't ever see me i've never painted velvet live i've only done it in my shop time and time again and it's failed and so i'm not going to take that live on live videos so i don't paint velvet um i'm not going to say that there are people that have painted velvet and have done it successfully find them follow what they do and do that but for for me it hasn't worked i've tried sanding i've tried butter i've tried wax i've tried uh wire br brushes that's all just too, first of all that's too much work for me what about I'm, tapestry a chair is not worth it tapestry i would not try tapestry has you know woven um it, you know tapestry is like feels like cross stitch almost i mean that's just too much too much thread too much fabric it's going to get hard what uh, works, for leather pleather pleather and leather is amazing we've already done that live before we've already done that together i know it's been a year so it's probably time to do that again um so count on that coming down the pipeline um so that's that okay so this is going to be a super quick easy basics basics about this okay i will let you know that i do offer a chair painting course it's a pre-record I, I taught a class and it's a two-hour class three maybe three hour class um and i pre -re we recorded it and i have that for sale on my website if you want like all the details but i want to go over the basics with you as far as what you need what you can and cannot paint what you should and should not paint what you need to look for maybe something should be would be better to reupholster it but pieces like this with the nail head trims especially if it just looks too difficult let's paint it okay and then let's make sure that the fabric is right so that you have a good positive 
successful outcome that you're going to be proud to show people you're going to be proud to put it in your booth or put it in your home and people are not going to mind sitting on it because the chairs that i do when they're done you don't mind sitting on them they're soft they're supple they don't feel the same this fabric is not going to feel the same when i'm done painting it won't feel like this fabric but it also won't be crunchy and it won't be hard it reminds me of outdoor fabric so you know the fabric i think it's called sunbrella you can buy it's out indoor outdoor fabric um, that you can buy. We did our uh, breakfast chairs in it, babe. Remember? Yeah. The black and white fabric, the sure. black and white stripe. We did all of our breakfast chairs in that because I have so many grandkids and littles at the house all the time, and they get their hands all over it, and it's protected, and it has a little bit of a different feel to it. That's what this ends up feeling like: is that indoor outdoor fabric. Okay. All right. So that is that's that now. The next thing is if you're shopping on Facebook or Marketplace, or maybe even it's one of your chairs, and your chair is dry and it looks good, you're like, yeah, this chair looks good. Okay, so this chair looked great, right? It looks good. I got it home today, just a few hours ago, and I'm gonna start prepping it for tonight's live. And I get my water bottle, because that's what I do, and I sprayed my cushion. I didn't soak my cushion, I just spritzed it. Like you're gonna watch me do this part right here. Um, by the way, if you would please hit that, uh, share button hit that share button share this with your friends we would love 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 it all you have to do is hit the share um that is like a major major hug for us and it gets the news out there and we can have more people see this video so i would really really appreciate that um so spritz your fabric and when i spritzed my fabric i spritzed the seat instantly like that fast all the water did was just go down onto the fabric stains appeared big stains big stains appeared could not see them when the fabric was dry. So, I don't know. I don't know if you want to, when you're going to pick up things on Marketplace, you want to take a Mr. Bottle with you and spritz the fabric. Probably not going to let you do that. Um, but we have a fix for that, and that's what I'm about to show you right now. That's what I've done right here. So, the stain was very obvious, and it, it went all, you know, you could see it, and then there was another smaller one inside that and another one off to the side. And I was like, holy cow. Um, that was so hidden. You wouldn't have seen it. The fabric looked this good when I, when I picked it up. So I was like, well, you know what? Sometimes I have to boss, I have to boss my fabric and it works. You can do that. You can use boss Dixie Bell's primer. This label's completely covered. It's got paint on it. It's got primer on it. You can use boss on your fabric. So, uh, Dixie Bell has boss clear, boss white and boss gray. Um, you can use any of those, any of those that you want. I guess it really just matters what you're really using it for. If you're using it just to uh, block the stain, which BOSS stands for, it's an acronym, B-O-S-S. -S. It stands for Blocks, Odors, and Stops Stains. Um, so if you are truly just using it to stop the stain or to block the odor, you could use the clear. I could have used the clear on here. Um, I went ahead and used gray, and the reason is, and I could have used white as well, uh, the reason is, I know for a fact that I'm going to paint this bottom down here black and white stripe. So I'm going to paint it with fluff white, and then I'm going to paint black stripes on top of the fluff white. Well, that means I'm going to have white paint, and this was a pretty strong, this is a pretty strong color. So in order to not, I want to have as little paint on this fabric as possible, as few layers as possible. That's your goal when you're painting fabric. Very different from wood. If you're painting fabric, you don't want to have four, five, six layers on here, else it's really going to be hard and not going to feel good. Um, and I mean, I don't know that it will crack, but I would think that over, it, it's just not going to work as well as if you have very few layers. So I went ahead and painted gray because I not only wanted to block the odor, I'm not the, to block the stain, but I also wanted to block the color. I wanted to use it as a color blocker as well. So I did one watered down version of boss. Now, what did I just say? Did I just say I used water in my boss? I did. So when you are painting furniture or whatever hard surface that you're painting, you don't want to water down your boss. It is, um, it is a water base, but you, it's a perfect formula. So you don't want to water down the boss on furniture because you might, um, you don't want to have uh, you don't want to break down its efficacy. I just love saying that word. So you don't want to, um, you want it to still be effective. You don't want to take any chances of not making it work well as like a bonding primer, blocking primer, odor blocker, anything like that. 
Back to the velvet thing real quick. Yes. Uh, Janice Benevento said, funny thing, I just looked up about velvet. Get writ dye, paintbrush, and a garden hose. What's a garden hose for? Or you can use DIY paint. It's a soft chalk based paint. Um, I actually, uh, I do know DIY paint very well and it is a, it's actually a clay based paint, but Dixie Belle also is a clay based paint. And regardless, I'm gonna tell you, just try it and prove me wrong, but I haven't found a paint that does not make velvet hard. Too hard, too crunchy for me. So that's just my, if you're new, if you're new to painting, I just, I'm just saying start, start with something like this. Start with a nice cotton twill fabric where you're gonna find some success. Do it on canvas, do it on drop cloth, uh, do it on duck cloth, duck cloth, do it on denim. Um, you'll just, it's just gonna be a lot more successful project <coughs> for you. So a garden hose, that is funny. <laughs> like a big time garden hose. Now dyeing, what she said, dyeing, dyeing it with red dye, that's another thing. And I know that you can do super, super watered down Dixie Belle paint coats. I know you can do that so that you're actually like dyeing the fabric, but you have to go, you can't go from dark red to gray. You can't do that. You're not gonna be able to do that. You're gonna only be able to do like a pale, pale blue velvet and take it to like a burgundy. You know what I mean? You gotta go from light to dark. Uh, if you painted the black first, then put on fluff stripes, would that hide the stain? Um, I, well, because I used, no, this is what I didn't want to worry about. Because I don't know what that stain was, or multiple stains, because I wasn't, I have no idea what they were. I didn't know if they were cat pee, dog pee, people pee, gravy, oil. I'm serious. I didn't know what it, I didn't know what it was. So, and I'm not having it steam cleaned first. Mm. So... I didn't want to just not prime it and put black black chalk paint down and then put white chalk paint on top of it. And then when I go to seal it and it sucks through whatever that stain might be, I just don't want to take the chance. So it just made more sense to, to boss first. Okay. So what back to what I was saying, um, we're going to do boss up here um, right now with you. And let me show you how I do it. So I don't want to put it on full strength. I want to put it on with water and I thin it out because I want this layer to be really thin because I, I have to put paint on top of this as well. So um, we are, before we do that part, I'm gonna tell you what the next step is on this. So this yes, is, Mary Jo, that, that is the case. What is the case? Uh, I took the liberty of answering for you. Uh, Mary Jo says, hello from Ohio. I have a burgundy upholstered chair, but I wanna paint it with sandbar. Since you said you have, uh, since you said you should have as few coats as paint as possible, will I do better if I start with a watered down coat of boss? Yes, you will. As long as it's a, fa you know, as long as your fabric, if you got like a cotton twill fabric, is that a thing, y'all? Cotton twill fabric? I wish I knew my fabric. Oh, right. today's Cinco de Mayo. It no? is Cinco de Mayo. Yes. Thank you, Valerie. How did I miss that all day in San Antonio? Because you are becoming healthy and not drinking right now, so you weren't worried about it. <laughs> You weren't thinking about going to happy hour. Okay, so um, you this is a single coat of paint. So before I flip this over, because we're going to put boss on here right now. Before I do, I'm going to sand this boss back a little bit. This has been um, drying for a couple of hours. It's completely dry. You can see that it's still nice and squishy. Um, I'm going to take, you can either use your uh, Dixie Bell uh, sanding pads, sanding sponges, the back side the sanding side, or you can use one of our surf prep. This is the super fine, doesn't matter. I've usually just used the Dixie Bell sanding sponge. It's kind of loud, so here we go. We have Jeet in from Nigeria. I don't think we've ever had anyone from Nigeria on this since I've been doing it. Hello. A lot of people from down under, from Joyce, from Florida, Georgia, California. All right, that's it guys. It already feels really, really good. So that's all I do. So then I just take a brush, just like one of these, just a fluffy brush. This is just my trash brush that I got like at Hobby Lobby. Just any, any yucky brush that you have that you can use to get off the dust, just like that. Now I'm gonna turn it around because there is a little bit on the back side, although I don't really care if that's soft or not because nobody sits back here. But we'll do it anyway. And get that off. Just like that. Okay. So Betty wants to know, just ordered your paint to paint my outdoor fabric cushions. Are you saying to water it down? Um, 
your outdoor fabric cushions. Well, let's get let's let's do a little bit of painting here, and then I can answer your Verde. questions, huh? We have someone in from Bolverde, Texas. From Bolverde, who Close is that? Home. I'm struggling with this chair. <laughs> uh, that's Shelly Rucker. Shelly, hello, hon. Do you need a hand? From Bolverde. Uh, no, I'm good, babe. <laughs> you want to angle that towards the camera a little bit? I got it. I got it. I'm all good. Hey, you get it. I got it. Okay, can y'all see this? This is how I paint the backs of my chairs. It's a lot easier than leaning over the seat. Really strains your back if you're like leaning over the, you have to lean all the way over that seat to paint. So I always lay my chair down, especially if I'm going to do artwork after I get all of my painting done and I'm ready to start my artwork on my chair. I usually do it upside down. I, I draw and paint upside down. Will um, you put, go ahead. will you put boss on the frame of the chair also? Um, no, I won't, but I, I do have it on. I do have some on the frame right there, but that's because you'll see, you'll see what I'm gonna do right here. I had to kind of pounce it to get it around these nail heads and it gets all over it and I didn't wanna leave it messy, so I just, excuse me, I just kind of brushed it out. But no, I'm not I'm not planning to boss it. To you have boss quite a few wood. Texans on here. Carrie Elaine's from Central Texas. I oh, guess awesome. that means Austin. Awesome. All right, so here we go. I've got my boss gray. Remember, you can do this with clear, white, or gray. Okay, so I'm bossing it because when I sprayed water on there, stains appeared instantly. Surely there's not stains on the back. So this is what I do. I just take my mister and I just let it just kind of settle right onto the fabric. It's not a lot, New just York a little City. bit. There are no stains that I can see. All right, so keep your mister bottle next to you. And I've got my brush here. My brush is a little bit wet. This is one of my Dixie Belle mini angle brushes. And I am going to go ahead and just start covering this with boss. So I put a little bit on. I try not to get too thick. I try to spread it out. And then I go ahead and spray it while it's on, just like this. And that helps it. You just keep spraying it. And it'll just move it around a little bit more. Because I really don't need that much color block. But I do need a little bit of color block. So I don't, I don't really care if it's full strength or not. And the reason that you should not do this on wood is because wood, you're using boss to not only block odors and stop stains, but most likely you're also using it as a primer for adhesion to the, to the surface that you're painting as well. And so you don't wanna mess up the formula by adding too much water to it and then it not adhere. So this is only, only on fabric. Can they see this pretty good? Yeah, I think so. Can y'all see that all right? There was someone on from Cuero. Okay, so on these nail heads, guys, I just pounce over the nail heads because there's orange and yellow, orange and yellow fabric underneath there, and orange and yellow is not part of my color plan for this chair. So I just am pouncing. And then when I pounce like that, it gets on my wood, which I'm okay with that. Um, let me do this side over here so you can see. So I'm pouncing, see how it gets on the wood because I'm pouncing those nail heads? Well, I don't want to leave it like that. Can they see that right there real well? I think so. I don't want to leave it like that because that, that gives, that's going to have a little bit of depth to it. So I go ahead and just take my brush and smooth out the wood part because I'm going to paint right over that anyway. Um, <clears throat> do you have a theme in mind for this chair? I do. It's a surprise. Okay. <laughs> I do. All that I can tell you is that I'm going to paint the seat black and white stripe. The zebra chair that I painted was pink and pink. I used soft pink and peony um, on the zebra chair. And this one, I'll be using caviar and fluff, of course, because those are my, you know, the colors I use more than anything. Do you want to use boss on all fabric? Before you start, do you no. do this on all fabric? No, if, no, sorry, I know that's going to have, I'm going to have to re-say this a lot. It's just if you need it. You've got, there's so many variables when you're painting fabric. They're, Mainly you know, for stink and for stains. Yeah, right? if you, or color blocking. So if you end up with fabric that has a lot of stains on it or it has an odor to it, um, uh, or if you buy a fabric that's super bold, you know, it's like hunter, you know, it's like Aunt Martha's and it's hunter green and burgundy and you want it to be a cool, trendy gray and white, well, you know, you may need to block some color, so you would use Boss for that. So, Dixie Bell just mentioned that you can get those spray bottles from them. Those things are oh, really cool. They are, the Mr. Bottles, yes. This is, a, this is a Dixie Bell Mr. Bottle right here. Let me tell you how I got this. 
So, uh, I had been, I gave my, my spray bottles away. I got a bunch of them and I did them in a giveaway and so I gave them away. Well, I had, I was down to one and it was my trusty one that I use all the time. And uh, I dropped it off of the top of a dresser and it broke. And I was without, a, I was without a Mr. Bottle. <laughs> I was back to using just a regular, you know, like squirt bottle, which is, they become, once you get used to these, those squirt bottles get really annoying. And, uh, and Dixie Bell was out of them for the longest. They were, they were out of these spray bottles. And then I guess they got some in and one of you guys, one of y'all from my online family said, I want to order a bottle for you and send it to you because you've been out of a bottle for so long. And I, so she did. She's so sweet. Are you going to, yeah. are you going to paint outside the fabric there? Oh yes, of course. The whole chair is, there won't be anything untouched on this chair. The whole thing, painting the whole thing. Oh, actually, I misunderstood the question. It's from Sue Sullivan Jones. Oh. Uh, can you paint outside fabric, like outdoors? Yes, you can. You sure can. You sure can. I've been trying to paint velvet and just not going well. Suggestions? Suggestion is to burn it. <laughs> Who said to burn it? I, I'm just messing around. I did I not tell that. anyone to burn it. Okay, so now what I'm doing, guys, I'm done with this. So now I'm just going around the, the trim and spreading out the... Spreading out the primer, the boss that, that got all over the trim. But I don't need to boss this trim. It's just it's already there. So I want to I want to make it smooth. So that's all I'm doing. Okay? All right. So we are done with the back. That is, we're going to leave that to dry. And we're going to paint the seat right now. We're going to paint it with fluff. Uh, yeah. The Who said that about the painting velvet? About the velvet? That was Jennifer Ladshaw. So Jennifer, I'm so glad you're here. I don't know if you came on late, but I be sure you watch the whole video. Go back and watch the replay because I explain fabrics, what to paint, what not to paint, what to look for if you're you want certain. Some help with that? No, I'm good. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I'm I wasn't good. Up. Don't you worry, honey. I got it. Uh, so I explain all of that. And velvet, in my opinion. Is a no-no as much as it. You know why? You know why everybody wants to paint velvet. I'll tell you. Does anyone else know why? Everyone wants to paint velvet because those gorgeous French provincial settees and parlor chairs and parlor sofas. Those are all in velvet. Cherie and, says her Mister Bottle also helps to stop her cat from scratching the rug. Oh, yes, that is right. That you do use those for training. She You're right. To just show it to her. Huh? Can you use new, can you use the new silk line on fabric? Can you use the new silk line on fabric? You know what? I don't know because I haven't done it. I think Dixie Bell mentioned that earlier. They did? What they say? Uh, I'm scrolling back. I would love back. to know. I could be wrong. I haven't tried it. I should try that though, right? What do you think, Dixie Bell? I should try it can't find it okay so now this is dry because I painted this earlier and we are gonna paint this oh wait I was still answering the other about velvet velvet that's why because it's those gorgeous frames and you know you have to get those reupholstered and everybody wants to be able to just paint them and you try and how many so of those sofas have I ruined doing those two uh, those gorgeous gorgeous sofas yeah Will you be using boss on the whole frame of the chair? No. No. The frame, I don't know what color I'm doing the frame yet. It just depends where I end up going with the artwork that I have in mind that's going to go on the back. Uh, but no, I won't, I don't need to, I won't boss it unless uh, I end up going with like a white or a light color and I doubt that I'm going to do that. Um, it's probably going to be more like peony or Marley's mermaid tail. We have a Canadian on board. Hello, eh? Hello, eh? Okay, so this is my fluff, my fluff, my favorite white. I had a napkin. Okay, babe, well, never mind. Will you give me another brush up there? See the angled one right there, just like the one I was using? Um, right, left, left, right. one more. Keep going left. Right there, perfect, perfect. Oops, Oops. knocked the light out. Whatever. Okay, so this is just another angle brush. My other one's got primer all over it, so I'm going to use this one. Um, Lisa says she has used um, the silk, and it's awesome. On fabric? On I fabric? Guess, I guess so. Okay, that's good to know. That's really good to know. All 
right, so I've got my fluff and I've got my spray bottle and I've got my brush and you do it just exactly like you did the boss. Um, you want to spritz this a little bit, just get it wet. And Shane, then... she uses Dixie Belle chalk paint. Thank you, babe, for answering those questions. Okay, so you see that. This is if I put it on full strength, which would be great if it's the only color that I was gonna put on here, but it's not because I'm gonna also put every other stripe is gonna be black. So I have a whole nother coat of paint. But if, if, if this were all you were doing, just a slightly damp brush and a light mist like that is all you would need. You could probably do this in one coat. You could probably do fluff in one coat. And, she was wondering if the fabric's going to crack if you if it's a highly used piece. No, it won't no. crack. No. And I wish I had some people on that have bought my mermaid chairs and the zebra chair that I did. I've done, oh my gosh, I've done so many. I wish I had someone on so they could actually, you know, be a, give a testimony. Oh, uh, Dixie Bell doesn't. says it's not recommended to use the silk. Um, oh, okay. Stick with the chalk mineral paint. Thank you. That's good to know. That's really good to know. I have never even asked. Never even asked. Never thought about it. Okay, so you saw me paint that with uh, water. So let me show you here. Let me show you right, right here. Okay, so I'm going to put full strength right here, just like that. And then um, I'll come over here and do it over here too. And then I'm going to move back over here where I was. I'm going to spray directly on that, and it gets pretty wet. And it's going to start just kind of moving down. Do you see how it runs down? Just kind of like watercolor. It just kind of moves in and it starts working its way into that boss, which is good. That's what you want. Then you can just use your brush and bring it on in like that. And then pounce around these nail heads, which probably most of you will be doing chairs with nail heads. Because like I said, otherwise, I mean, you might as well just reupholster it, you know, unless you're just wanting to do artwork on chairs. So just to make sure, Joyce uh, says, so the wood frame does not need boss or primed? It's, it it's, no dip, it's no dip, it's no, this I'm not going to because I'm going to be painting this a bold color. It, it's wood, chalk paint, chalk mineral paint, Dixie Bell goes right over it without needing to be primed at all. So it's, there's variables just like when you paint any, any wood. It depends on if I wanted to paint this fluff or cotton and then put a top coat on it, I would, I would prime this because I would want to block any possible uh, bleed throughs or tannins. But because I know I'm going to use a super bold color over here. Uh, dark, highly pigmented color. I'm not worrying about the bleed throughs or wood tannins. Cindy's asking, boss comes in colors. How do you know what color to use? Uh, it, like this one, it really was just, I, I could have used clear. We, I talked about this at the beginning as well. Um, I could have used clear, but because it was an orange, bright orange and yellow, and I knew that I was going to be painting white on the seat, I didn't want any color to have to come through. And had I left it, if I were painting, if I did not have gray boss on or white boss on, um, and I'd use clear boss, I'd have to do two coats of white without a doubt, and then a coat of black on top of that. So this just lessens the, the coats that I do. All right, so when you're doing fabric and you get right over here by the side, you wanna make sure that you get paint down inside there. So you have to reach down and pull it apart and brush down in there, because if you don't, when your customer or you or you have someone over and they go to sit down, they may look down by their leg and see the avocado green or the whatever ugly color, you know, was down inside there. You need to be sure that you pull that fabric forward like I just did. Get plenty of paint on the end of your brush and really get down in there. So now do you see why I paint the cushion first and not the frame? because we, we get all over that wood, just like that, okay? Are you usually on, how, how long are you usually on here? Uh, usually, I usually go about 45 minutes. So probably another 10 minutes, Jeet. Someone asking? It's 2 a.m. in Nigeria, in case you're Oh, wondering. we're almost done. We're almost done, so you can go back to bed. Okay, so now let me, I'm gonna move this um, against my knees a little bit so y'all can see the seat. I'm gonna do it just like this. Um, oh, I got a cool print on my on my pants from the nail heads. <laughs> cool print. Okay. So, same thing up here. I'm just going to kind of let you see the paint as I do it. So, I'm putting it on full strength. You can take it out of the jar if you want and stir in water and put literally put on thinner paint if you want. Or just put on your thick paint, 
spray it, let it sit for, you don't have to soak it, just let it sit for a minute and then you'll go back over to it and start spreading it out. So full strength again. We've got Beth on from Australia. Hello, Beth. What time is it in, in Australia? Okay, so this is wet. So I'm gonna go, I let the water sit on it and activate it and it just spreads. Like it's so nice. Go back over here, spray some. Come over here, see how it's, look at that coverage, you guys. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so cool? Now I'm gonna come back over here where I sprayed. See that? So it's sort of like, once you put that boss on there or your first coat of paint when you're doing this next coat, it's really no different than painting on a canvas. It feels like I'm painting on canvas. And you, add, when I paint with, with Dixie Belle paint on canvases or even acrylic paints, same thing, I use a lot of water and um, just spray it and then go back and, and spread it out. Just like this. Now, next week, if I, unless I just can't stand it, uh, I'm gonna try to let this project sit and not touch it and come back with you guys next week and show you how I stripe my seats. Because if most of you use tape to stripe your seats, it, it's, it doesn't work on fabric. Not only when you uh, put your paint on it does the tape not want to stick to the fabric, uh, but also it's very difficult to tape and then come down over this curve and not have your tape lift. So I have a little trick. So I'm going to try to not touch this project and focus on my other projects that are going on in the shop and come back with you guys next week and we'll continue this. Um, so because I think that that's a, a good tip. Katie wants to know what do you seal it with or do you seal it? I do seal, and I use the Dixie Bell. Uh, I personally like the Dixie Bell Clear Spray Wax, and I uh, put it in a bowl, and I work it in really good with a natural brush. But you can also, but that dries faster, and it dries a little bit harder than the, um, you can use the clear wax, or you can use Big Mama's Butter, I believe as well, and work those in with a natural brush into the paint, and that gives it more of a soft, leathery feel, a little bit softer feel, um, but I just like how the, the clear spray wax dries. Dan says she's tried to paint mini fabrics and Dixie Bell is her favorite. Yay, I'm so glad, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for that shout out, that's awesome. And Amber wants you to know that she's having salad, no tomatoes for dinner. <laughs> Amber, Amber, you're hilarious. I'm so glad, Amber, good girl, good girl. And, um, Somebody's asking if you put boss on first. I did. That gray on the back is boss. And go back and watch the replay because- PRR if, designs. Yeah, if you just came on, go back and watch the replay. I gave all the, all kinds of little tips that are really, really helpful in painting fabric. And um, you'll see that that's a gray boss and it'll tell you why, why Great. we went with gray boss. Goldie wants to know, um, is it Easy Peasy Wax? Yes, the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Yes. Easy Peasy. Mm -hmm. It's their, yeah, it's their only spray wax. Okay, so that is that, you guys. Um, we are out of time. It is 740. So if you've got a chair like this and you've been dying to paint it, it's really this easy. Be sure you... Um, but make sure you're following me on Tracy's Fancy as well, please. And uh, if I do paint this before next Wednesday, I'll do it somewhere on my page. I always post my, post my finished projects and usually have a full blog, usually a YouTube video as well. And um, I'd love to have you follow along. And I will try to save this project and be back here next Wednesday night on Dixie Bell's page again so that we can continue with this project and show you how amazing their paint works on fabric. All right. Okay, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Those of you that jump over to my page, I will see y'all over there for just a little bit, and we'll see y'all next Wednesday, okay? Y'all take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.